Okay. Um, for those of you who saw me speak last year, you'll know that I'm a bit of a nervous speaker. So if we could all just take a breath together, I think that would be good. <laughs> Calm down. <laughs> um, well, <laughs> what can I say? Maybe I should take up. Uh, maybe I should take up base jumping. You know, just to uh, really feel alive. Um, but thank you. So uh, my name is Pauline Ko. Oh, sorry. I should keep this for the people uh, online. Uh, hello, my name is Pauline Ko. Uh, I'm a technical product manager at AWS. And as part of that work, uh, I'm a, a part of the governing board of the Academy Software Foundation. Um, so illustrious members of the Academy Software Foundation, um, I'm here to speak to you a little bit about um, the problem that I posed last year. So my agenda for this afternoon is to just do a quick self-introduction again uh, uh, a quick review of the uh, problem as posed last year, uh, why it's important to solve, um, and then uh, uh, get right to some of the updates that I'm able to give uh, this year as well. If I've done this correctly, I'll have left just enough time for some softball questions. Um, but no, please uh, feel free to fire away. OK, so uh, hello again. <laughs> My name is Pauline Ko. Um, in the past, I've worked at uh, studios and uh, on uh, visual effects and feature animation projects. Um, uh, some of my favorites are, are shown here. Um, some highlights I'll call out are Animal Logic and uh, MPC London, Technicolor, some small startups such as Lytro, some larger startups such as Google, um, and uh, these days, I am a senior technical product manager at AWS, focusing on rendering products. And I'm here on behalf of the AWS ThinkBox deadline team, who have been delivering render farm technology since 2004. So now we get back to 2023. Um, if you were here last year uh, listening to me speak, this may seem familiar. I will try to be brief. Thank you for your patience. Um, in two words, unnecessary complexity. And what do I mean by that? I mean, on the left-hand side, you'll see a list of pipelines that are either current or emerging uh, that have a rendering component uh, or a graphics compute component. Um, on the right-hand side, hang on. Left, right, yeah. Uh, on the right hand side, uh, we I've listed some uh, uh, pipeline similarities and commonalities uh, that are often found in these pipelines. Um, that includes some workflows, uh, software stacks, dependencies, uh, the way they parallelize, and even file formats. Um, so the key takeaway here is these jobs have more in common than not. So why is unnecessary complexity uh, the important thing to solve? Uh, well, I think the most straightforward way I could think of to, to summarize this is to be able to simplify pipelines and thus simplify maintenance with an open standard for describing jobs. I had to read my notes on that one. <laughs> uh, on the left-hand side over here, I've got uh, some artist and pipeline tools that describe jobs uh, using the same description specification. Uh, on the uh, right-hand side here, um, I've listed uh, some example um, compute solutions. Um, some are a little bit more generalized and some are a bit more specialized, um, but they all uh, can speak the same uh, job description standard. Um, some of these you might think uh, could be uh, supporting the specification directly, or uh, they can have a translation layer built so that you can translate from the open standard uh, to a proprietary format, for example. With me so far? Any questions? Haven't lost anybody. All right, cool. Sweet, let's keep going. Ooh, loosen up. All right. Okay, cool. <laughs> um, uh, so, okay, I'm going to try for semantic satiation, which is when you lose all meaning of a couple of words. Those words are interoperability and modularity. Right, bear with me. <laughs> so, um, the reason why this is important is modular and interoperable pipelines are simpler to develop and maintain. Uh, open standards are a great way to build modular and interoperable pipelines. 
how did I do? <laughs> Good. Um, this is a very well-established uh, uh, pattern amongst open source content production uh, uh, workflows. Um, and I'm personally inspired by a few Academy Software Foundation project examples, including OpenColorIO and OpenEXR. Um, for example, uh, a wide variety of uh, render uh, engines, render applications today uh, will output uh, OpenEXR images directly um, and a, another huge variety set uh, of compositing and edit, editorial suites um, will be able to understand them directly. Um, I could name some favorites, uh, but uh, I think it might actually be easier, uh, if you all agree, that uh, to try and uh, find a render application that won't write EXRs and a compositing tool that won't open EXRs. Um, that's sort of the power of standardization, I think. So, yep, all right, move on. Um, so at Open Source Day 2023, I described the opportunity for an open standard for describing render jobs that is expressive enough to work with all these different types of workflows and pipelines today, as well as tomorrow. Um, and the feedback has been very positive. So um, well, I've heard uh, both privately and publicly, uh, that many of you had been thinking along similar lines, if not already taking uh, a stab at uh, solving these yourselves uh, internally. Um, but almost everybody that I spoke to was very excited at the prospect of collaborating and thinking together, together about some of these patterns and solving these uh, uh, together um, with each other. So. Uh, uh, we got back to work on a plan to uh, execute um, that allowed us to bring some of the plans uh, for uh, being able to share what we were working on um, a little bit earlier um, and a little bit faster. So. Cool. So, oh my fingers are tingly. Okay. Uh, as a direct result of your enthusiasm, uh, I can give you an update and tell you about open job description. Um, my team will uh, be watching. I think some of them are tuned in uh, and they'll be cringing at how I have to oversimplify things for a presentation format. Uh, so I do apologize. Um, come up here and do it yourselves. Come on. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, so what is it? Uh, uh, open job description is a uh, open and expressive job description standard uh, that we are using ourselves. Um, uh, we're using it to directly address the issues of interoperability and modularity uh, in some of our uh, scale testing pipelines and build pipelines and things like that. Um, it is beginning to standardize the way we think about working and describing jobs. Uh, working within describing jobs. Um, the specification was released uh, in January, and uh, we also released last week uh, libraries and tools just ahead of Valentine's Day, because we love you. So, uh, all right, let's take a closer look. So uh, these are four of the key features that I thought it was important for open job description to focus on, at least initially. Um, very curious to hear if we share the same thoughts and if there are other focus areas that people are considering as well. I'm gonna touch on these over the next few slides. Okay, so I used to be a TD uh, and I used to manage a global team of Wranglers and TDs. The, the bar I challenged my current team with uh, was for OpenJD to be TD friendly. And that means uh, that is easy for humans and automation to work with. Um, just curious, what's everybody's uh, favorite text editor? Actually, I don't care. Uh, it's most likely you'll find it Sublime, right? Because Sublime is a text editor. Okay, don't quit my day job, loud and clear. I get it. Um, <laughs> You gotta spice things up, okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, the open job description structures uh, are usable to describe a huge variety of jobs in our experience. Um, this diagram uh, is a simplified way of describing um, how an example FFmpeg job that generates three of the same videos with different uh, chroma subsampling 
uh, would be constructed. Um, special thanks to the uh, Academy Software Foundation Media Encoding Guidelines Project for this example, and Sean Wallach for putting it together. Um, we are confident uh, from our own testing, uh, as I said before, that uh, pretty much any command line job uh, that can be controlled with a series of parameters um, or wrapped in a script can be described uh, and constructed in this way. Um, I'm very curious to see how we can push the boundaries of this collectively. Um, and there's been some amazing discussion topics around uh, immutability and streamed changes, interactive input, uh, all sorts of fun things for uh, an old render farm hand like me. So um, a more granular diagram with explicit details will be available uh, on the GitHub. Okay. so. Let's dive one level deeper. If you don't like pretty pictures about text, here's some actual text. So, <laughs> um, at a basic level, open job description describes jobs as a collection of software steps and parameters, which those steps will iterate through to run as tasks. Um, uh, so a parameter can be something like cameras, left, right, mono, um, also frame ranges, uh, or chroma subsampling strategies. Um, additionally, you'll be able to describe environments and cleanup and uh, almost everything else in between, including dependencies between software steps. Questions? I just threw a lot at you. Just a quick check on questions. All right, I'm doing well. Okay. Ooh. All right. Uh, okay, open job description sessions are a concept um, that bridges the gap between describing the work and how it is run. So this is a very simple, simplified diagram of how those steps are put into practice as codified by the OpenJD sessions package uh, available via GitHub as well as PyPI package manager uh, today. Um, so uh, the simplest version of this is we set up an environment, uh, we run tasks until there are no more tasks for that step, then we exit the environment, and then we set up the next series of tasks, uh, ad infinitum, ad nauseum. Um, so yeah, that's again using that same uh, uh, FFmpeg example as earlier. Okay, any questions on that one? Not yet? Awesome, okay, flying through this. Um, last but not least, of course, uh, I wanted uh, open job description to be open and extensible. Uh, the specification is open for everyone today. It is available on GitHub, uh, and the packages are accessible via PyPI Package Manager, uh, as I mentioned before, um, and we are uh, working with it today, like I mentioned uh, at the top of the presentation. So we'll be answering a lot of questions, but I look really forward to the day when uh, we aren't the only ones answering questions because people will be using it and coming up with uh, interesting ways to use it um, together. Okay, so to summarize, um, our focus right now for open job description is ease of use for humans and automation, expressiveness for everything we need to get done now and tomorrow, uh, and provide clear structure for describing instructions for all of the work, not just parts of it. Um, and it is open and extensible for all of us. Um, and if you weren't happy with the simple diagrams today, uh, that's also uh, on the GitHub is where you'll be able to tell us um, how to improve upon anything that you've heard today uh, or be able to find any of the unfiltered, high voltage, raw, uncut, uh, good stuff that they made me drop from this presentation, uh, such as this. Um, my friends, if you really like the high verbosity, <laughs> explicitly labeled diagrams uh, with granularity and detail deemed too explicit for broadcast by my solutions architect, um, this is a sneak peek of what you'll find on the GitHub. Pause for laughter. Oh, sorry, I'm not supposed to say that out loud. Um, jokes aside, I know I'm putting a lot of emphasis on the GitHub, uh, but we 
get to do more like this uh, at the end of the day if I can show my leadership that that's where the cool kids hang out. Um, so our team are all eagerly watching the discussion forum on that GitHub uh, even right now. Um, so on behalf of uh, the AWS ThinkBox deadline team and myself, um, I thank you for this opportunity to give you an update. Uh, and I think I may have time for a question or two. Is that right? Yeah. Awesome. Questions. Hey, Pauline, thanks. Um, are you attempting to tackle the idea of, okay, this job needs this kind of machine, this job needs or this task needs this kind of machine, this task needs a different kind of machine, um, and, and is that all? Because that's probably one of the harder problems to sort of solve for, and so I'm wondering how you're attack, attacking that. Several. Or several, yeah, or several, yeah. Or several, uh, mm, yes. Uh, there is a structure called, um, or maybe it's a parameter, I'm pretty sure I'm getting an angry email right now by my uh, principal engineers. <laughs> um, there's a, there's a, a parameter you can use called uh, capabilities, um, and that helps to label the capabilities that you would look for, um, and you can specify things at a very uh, detailed fashion or at a higher level string fashion, um, and then uh, be able to use uh, some of the libraries um, as well as configurations in uh, the rendering farm of your choice to be able to deliver uh, those capabilities um, once the job has been created in the render farm. Um, that's sort of how we're thinking about it right now, um, and that's where we're sort of uh, designing towards. It's interesting, thank you. Sorry, say that again? The other half of the question is, Sometimes jobs need several machines to run on that are scheduled together, like MPI distributed execution. I don't have an example of that off the top of my head. Um, I think that would be a really interesting discussion topic on the forums. Um, I'm looking forward to what smarter people than me uh, would come up with <laughs> uh, in terms of that. But yes, I understand. Hey, thanks. That was a great talk. It's really exciting. Um, I had a question about the situation I run into now and then where you don't exactly know all the work that needs to be done when the job starts. It's hard to modify a job graph after it's been done. Sometimes we end up spawning sub jobs where one job waits for another job to do. H have you thought about the, the situation when the workload isn't clear until the job's running? Um. I'm nodding and choosing my answer very carefully. Um, the reason why I'm smiling, though, is because that touches on an immutability uh, or mutability topic uh, that's very active in our discussion forums right now. I would love, um, as a call to action uh, for you, Paul, to uh, dive in and pose that question uh, in the thread that's in there, because uh, I think that that would be an interesting test of the specification. Um, I have a hard time describing uh, a job like that right now, um, and certainly like it's going to be difficult for me to quickly lay it out, but uh, I think we can dive into more detail uh, on the discussion forums. Well, yeah, it'd be interesting. I'm not saying I have a solution either. It's just... Um, but it's like interesting, an, yeah. But like an example is like if... Um, a model has a bunch of variants, you know, yeah. using USD parlance, and you need to do something per variant, but you don't know the variants right away until you load the model. You know, there's like more and more you can do up front before the spawn the job, but inevitably something needs to be discovered on the fly. And we end up sloppily wasting machines waiting for a sub job to go. And yeah, this is an interesting topic. So. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, as, a, as a render wrangler before, uh, that was always one of the interesting needs. Um, you know, uh, does your render farm end up looking a little bit more like a, a, a reservation type of tool <laughs> than an actual scheduler? Um, but yeah, that's that's an area, uh, active area for discussion, uh, Very for cool. sure. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you. Any other questions? 
Oh, um, my speaking guidelines say I have to gesticulate more, so. Okay. So uh, we'll just splice that in there. And, uh. so, is there a um, is there a plan or thoughts about ex turning this into some kind of CI/CD tool, or when you know AWS GitHub gets spun up, uh, does that become the uh, the CI/CD description language? One of the things I think um, the team was very intentional about doing, uh, and again, a, another great discussion topic that's pretty active in the discussion forums right now is, you know, how specific do we want to get with this for visual effects and feature animation and the sort of linear content? Um, by design, it doesn't have a lot of those structures built in. So for example, we didn't call our parameters frames um, uh, or anything like that. Uh, and it's not called open render job description, um, for example. So uh, I think it's possible. I think it's an active question as to whether it's suitable. I'm a big believer in choosing the right tool for the job. So uh, if it's suitable for that, then maybe. Uh, if it's not, then we can discuss about how we can make it something closer to that. Uh, yeah. Any other questions? All right, thank you. Thank you.